ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, tankers of all ages, Sir Harry's back. And I'm not just back on YouTube, I'm actually just back from holiday. Uh, Mrs. Sir Harry and I just celebrated our 20th anniversary with a second honeymoon to the UK and Ireland. And wait a minute, UK, end of June. Yeah, we went to Tank Fest, had a great time. Uh, I, I think the missus even had a good time, she said so afterwards. Uh, what a wonderful two days at Bobbington, taking it all in. Uh, all kinds of live exhibits and of course the museum itself. Uh, we saw see modern vehicles here. And they had a really nice feature on urban engineering vehicles, which uh, don't always get a lot of love because they don't have turrets and guns and things like that. But uh, put on a great show. You can see here uh, the Terrier, modern British uh, armored engineering vehicle with the dozer and the fascine in the back. Absolutely fantastic time. And it was a lot more than just that in the live exhibit, of course. We spent the first day watching the live demos. There's the modern stuff, of course, the Challenger 2 and the Warrior in all their glory. Uh, the modern British AFEs, and uh, there was also some World War One tanks. They had here a, a British Mark IV from the First World War. Uh, they also had a French and a German First World War tank. You see how slow these things move. It's probably a good thing Wargaming didn't start uh, the tech trees right at the beginning because uh, it would take a half an hour to get across some of the maps. But for me and a lot of the fans there, I think it was really the World War II tanks that we were there to see, and there was one of the stars of the show. Uh, of course, the M4A3EH Sherman uh, Fury from the movie of the same name. And uh, it was one of the key players in the big final battle they had at the end of both days. Unfortunately, it's German counterparts. There's supposed to be a Jagdpanther and a Stug III uh, taking part in that battle. They both had mechanical problems. So there was a lone Panzer III uh, sort of fighting it out on the German side. So it really kind of turned into a bit more of an infantry-heavy uh, demonstration, but uh, they did a great job. These reenactors, of course, who volunteer their time and uh, buy all their own equipment and weapons, did a great job and uh, really put on an entertaining show for everybody. So uh, Tank Fest all around was fantastic. And as I said, we spent the second day in the museum viewing gems like Tiger 131, of course, uh, the only working Tiger in the world, the Luke, the cutest tank in the world, I guess, according to Jingles anyway. The Hetzer didn't have the 105 on. Uh, and the TOG, of course, uh, you can't go to Bobbington without seeing the TOG. And I don't think World of Tanks really gives you a feel for just how monstrously large this tank really is. There were YouTubers on the ground, of course, some of the European contributors like Quickie Baby. Didn't get a chance to actually meet him. The lineups were pretty enormous uh, to see him. I did bump into Sir Havoc, though, outside. Uh, really nice fella. And uh, Aging Jedi, uh, who is not aging, very young fella, of course, and very nice. And Jingles. Can't go to Bobbington Tank Fest without seeing Jingles. So, uh, today's video is going to be on the T-50. I had a request uh, quite a while back now for uh, some videos on the T-50. It's a Tier 4 Russian light tank. And uh, it's pretty quick, a uh, nice uh, top speed limit on it, pretty mobile. It's got a nice fast firing gun, unfortunately not terribly accurate, uh, but it does punch pretty heavy for a, uh, a tier four light, uh, about 50 average alpha per shot. And surprisingly, uh, for a tier four light tank, it actually has pretty good armor. You'll see in the battles that are coming up, I actually bounce quite a few shots and uh, I'm able to stay alive and stay in the fight a bit longer than would otherwise be the case if I was in another tier four light tank. So is it as good as the Luke's at Tier 4? Mm, probably not, but uh, it's a heck of a lot of fun to play, and uh, you can really have some good results with it. So let's get into our first battle. So for our first battle, we're in a Tier 4 engagement on Erlenberg. Uh, you can see we've got six Tier 4s and nine Tier 3s on each team, so uh, fairly balanced, uh, even number of heavies. And uh, generally speaking, i got to say I'm pretty happy with the new matchmaker. Uh, it doesn't account for skill-based matchmaking yet, so you can still get those teams that are, you know, all purple and green on one side and all red on the other. But other than that, I, I think it's a huge improvement over what we've seen in the past. And uh, well done, Wargaming. I will say that's one thing you've done right. So I'm going to do a little scout run here up the west side of the uh, eastern ridge. always like to try to run up here and see who's crossing across to the north. Usually you're pretty safe uh, unless the enemy bum rushes the middle. And in fact, yeah, there's a Panzer. 38 and he's coming right down the center there. So I'm spotted. I'm going to back off immediately uh, And now I'm going to be concerned about any enemies up on the north end of that ridge around those two houses So you'll see throughout this game I'm trying to be careful uh, using buildings for cover to try to protect my flanks from fire uh, from that north end of the ridge and uh, Potentially from across uh, across on the other hill on the far side too if I happen to be within render range of any enemies so that uh, Panzer 38 NA uh, got taken out really quickly by our T-18, uh, uh, the uh, old uh, American uh, tank destroyer turned artillery. Uh, it used to be really fun as a TD. I've never played it as Artie because I, I don't play Artie anymore. But uh, we also have a Panzer 1C, their DW2, and a T2 light all rushing up the center. This is a really risky play. Generally, it does not pay off uh, if the enemy is in strength on the eastern side on the hill there as we are because you can get shots between the buildings and gradually pick them apart. 
There's an AMX 38 up on the Western Ridge. Uh, he stopped, so I actually overshoot him. I put auto aim on and I get lucky and track him. Uh, but now the Panzer 1C whips out and uh, tries to unload his auto cannon into me. And you can see there I bounced every single one of his shots. That auto cannon doesn't have great penetration, but uh, again, for a light tank, as I mentioned earlier, the T50 does actually have pretty decent armor. And if you angle it, uh, you know, equal tier, lower tier tanks can have trouble penetrating it sometimes. Uh, if you play the T127, the Russian uh, premium light tank, it does play a lot like that. It's actually, I think, a little faster. It certainly feels faster anyway. There's an M2. He's got the big derp gun. Uh, I thought he was aiming at me. I was getting ready to, to duck out of the way. Uh, that shell's very slow, and usually you can evade it from that distance, but uh, he decided to move instead, and uh, he's advancing here. So I'm going to try to lead him here. Uh, I get lucky there. He disappeared and then uh, reappeared for a second. So I put a shot into him. I bounce a second. And then, uh, yeah, the, the shell velocity is not the best on this gun, so I do get a few shots into him before he ducks behind cover there. Uh, but, uh, yeah, I don't manage to kill him, but that's okay. Our Panzer 1C up on the eastern ridge is going to take care of him for us. So things are looking okay. Uh, that enemy rush down the western side uh, is uh, meeting some resistance, and, and that's going to peter out pretty quickly, actually. They, uh, they shot their bolt uh, early in the game. And uh, I think if they'd stayed way over on the western side and rushed, they probably would have had the numbers to uh, overwhelm us around the castle. And then they could have pushed east. But coming up the middle like that on the west side of the river is very dangerous. There's the enemy Lago. He's who I was worried about up on the hill. I do track him and then I bounce him. Uh, but our Panzer 2G manages to take him out with his auto cannon. So uh, the threat on the hill is neutralized now. We can pretty much roam right up the middle now. And just have to watch for any snipers up on the north ridge there. Uh, we know there's a Sarl up there somewhere. Uh, I haven't played that tank a lot. It, 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 the times I played it, I didn't mind it too much. I mean, it's not a, not a stellar tank, but uh, I remember it having a pretty punchy gun, so I'm being careful. The enemy Panzer 38 NA, uh, I guess the, what's left of that rush to the north is still there. Uh, I shoot at him just as he disappears, and uh, I'm told there the fact I did hit him, and yeah, there you can see he's lost some damage. I will apologize, by the way, the replay of the damage tracker and, uh, and across the bottom there, the ammo and the, uh, the consumables aren't showing up properly. I've had some issues with some 917 replays, so uh, forgive me for that, please, but uh, yeah, I did hit that Panzer 38 NA, and now he's hiding behind the building. He's taking damage from the south. He backs out, and I wait and manage to get him as well, so uh, there's another kill. Happy with that. Now we've got an enemy clustered on the hill. There's the Samoa. Uh, very well armored uh, French medium tank. And uh, he's distracted, luckily. I think he's worried uh, about uh, threats up to the north. So he ignores me as I put several shots into his turret and manage to take him out. And there's the Sarl. Uh, full broadside. You see that shot there? The uh, uh, reticle on this thing goes crazy when you move the tank. And uh, you can see at that loud, the first shot on the Sarl, it actually flew right out to the outside right side of the reticle because I didn't let it aim. So. Uh, yeah, not terribly accurate. If you do let it aim, it'll, it'll do the job, but uh, you, can't, uh, you can't really shoot on the fly that well and expect to hit too much. Uh, and for a light tank, that's usually not a problem. If you're, if you're shooting on the fly, on the move, usually you're uh, pretty close to the enemy and uh, you're circle strafing them or something like that, so you don't have to worry as much about accuracy. But from range, on the T-50, you definitely want to let it aim. So the Sarl backs off. We just have three enemy tanks left now. The Martyr two, very dangerous TD. Uh, it's certainly been nerfed many times over the years, but uh, still pa uh, packs a pretty good punch, good rate of fire, uh, and if you let the gun aim, very accurate. And the enemy birch gun artillery, that's actually a really, really nice little tier 4 British artillery. Uh, the only top gun I've ever gotten in an artillery, I, I got in a birch gun way back in the day uh, when I did play artillery, and uh, has a turret so you don't have to... Uh, move and lose your camo and everything uh, when you want to shift the gun. So Sarl's taken out, enemy artillery uh, shoots at me there and misses. And uh, now it's just clean up. So the Martyr, again, he's up in the north there somewhere. We're going to be really careful. There's lots of bushes. He has good gun depression. He can use that ridge. Uh, and if he's taking advantage of the bushes properly, uh, it'd be hard to see him before he gets his first shot off. Luckily, he wasn't using the bushes very well there. He gets spotted. I call for fire. I'm behind a bush. I don't shoot initially. Uh, until uh, he starts backing off and then I do shoot and uh, yeah, I miss anyway, so that's the T-50's gun. Uh, not terribly reliable, but uh, you know, it's, it's a good rate of fire and again, if you're up close and, and strafe in a target, then uh, it does serve you well. So we're just going to go in for cleanup now, uh, going to try to see the Martyr 2. Hopefully my teammates can take him out before he can get a shot at me. Uh, he can't one-shot me, but he can certainly do a lot of damage and uh, I'd rather not if I don't have to. So there's the artillery. SU-5 announced that was his last shot. He misses. And then the T-18 takes over and gets another kill. So uh, well done to him. Uh, open top TD like the Martyr is very vulnerable. And there's the Birch Gun. Oh, and he's aiming at me. Uh, back up. No. Yeah, no. Okay. I knew he wasn't going to one-shot me. Uh, the armor on this is good enough that he probably wouldn't have penned me. And I just finished him up for the end of the battle. So that's an ace tanker in the T-50. You got the fighter. I've uh, got four or more kills, as you can see there, 832 damage and 953 XP. Now, there's the accuracy of the gun, 47 shots, only 24 hit, 18 penned. 
Uh, but, you know, I'm pretty happy with that. Now, we're in a tier 6 battle. Let's see how the T50 can do here. So in that battle, I was actually being pretty aggressive. I guess you'd call that active scouting. I was poking, trying to find the enemy. Uh, you can see, again, apologize, by the way, uh, look away from the aim reticle if you have trouble with blinking lights because it's, it's doing some wacky stuff with this 917 replay. But, uh, yeah, we're on Westfield, and uh, you can see myself and the looks and an M4 improved. We're going to head up to the south here. Uh, I really like uh, playing on the north side of this map in a medium or a heavy. Uh, I find the south really, you can just sort of hold the enemy off. You don't have to commit a lot of tanks there because the game is won in the northwest corner of the map on the hill and in the little town there, the T-shaped town. Uh, but you do have to have something on the south, of course, in case the enemy does push. You can alert your teammates and uh, hopefully take some, uh, take some enemies out before they can advance too far. So uh, things aren't off to a great start. We've already lost uh, uh, one of our tanks there. The enemy IKV uh, took him out. And uh, now the Lux and I are going to go up and spot. And I did manage to get a spot on the Crusader there before the Lukes did. And the Crusader, of course, which is now uh, a medium tank. Uh, in this case, I think it's still showing up as a light there. Uh, I have to do a new video on the Crusader because my video on that, of course, was when it was a light tank and you got the light tank move bonus. Uh, but now, of course, that's all changed. So the enemy T-34 pops up in the opposite ridge. I do get a shot into him. I tried to track him. Uh, wasn't successful. That's okay. The Luke's back's off. It's probably reloading. And I'm going to go up and take a poke here and see if I can uh, get some shots into the Crusader. Uh, so no sign of him yet. You see things aren't going great. We're down 3 nothing. There he is. Okay, so fast rate of fire on this gun is one of the great things about it. I'm close enough now. I don't have to worry as much about aiming. But there you go. We uh, take the Crusader out. The Luke's actually finishes him off after I whittle him down. Uh, that happens a few times, I think, in this battle. The Luke's uh, sort of cleans up after I uh, soften the targets up. But that's okay. Uh, we're kind of pulling a little closer now. 4-2. Um, and now, uh, f yeah, 4-3. So that's better. We're, uh, we're getting a bit, uh, a bit closer. And you can see there, two shot, shot off the T-34 bounces. And enemy ELC had uh, snuck in uh, probably up the middle of the valley there and uh, took me out or took out some of our tanks and uh, the T-34 had gone on the other side of the valley which is a great spot to go by the way uh, but uh, you have to be careful use bushes properly because you get torn apart by the enemies up near the bridge if you get spotted so we take out the ELC I do take a shot in the back from the Panzer 4D who's somewhere up to the north there not sure where uh, you have to use my repair kit to fix my tracks and now we're back to spotting again uh, the Luke's is still forward to me so he'll probably spot things before me but uh, I'm there to support him, of course. Uh, in the event that he has to pull back, I can provide some covering fire. So we've tied it up now, 5-5. Five, five. Uh, good job to the team. T-34 pops up again. I'm going to pull around the hill here and see if we can get him, but no, the Lux uh, polishes him up. That Lux is a pretty uh, brutal little Tier 4 light tank. Um, the only thing I don't like about it is, of course, it takes so long to reload the cannon on that. Uh, you're pretty vulnerable, uh, so you have to really, really time your runs properly so that you can take a target out and then get out while you're reloading and you're not stuck uh, in amongst a bunch of other enemy tanks. So now we're going to advance up the uh, far eastern edge of the map here. I'm going to use the bushes to try to uh, stay out of sight. Uh, the Lux is going to take a bit more of an open route. And there's the Panzer 4D that probably hit me earlier, so let's light him up. He seems uh, pretty worried about what's happening uh, off to his right there. And uh, that gives me a chance to put this fast firing gun to work and uh, whittle down his hit points. And I think, uh, yeah, there we go. The Lux finished him off again. Uh, that's okay. Again, that's all right. Good job, uh, Luke's. And uh, we're cleaning up the uh, eastern flank here. Now it's 10 to 5, so the team's really done well. There's an M4. Now he's using his gun depression. He's only partially uh, up over the ridge there, and so I'm going to have trouble penetrating his turret. Uh, you can see there I get lucky and get one through, but then I bounce. And now he's backing down. Uh, and, oh, there's a the Hetzer. Okay, so now we want to be really uh, careful here because if the Hetzer has that 105 and we get spotted, then uh, even if he doesn't penetrate us, he can uh, definitely ruin our day. I uh, get another one into the hatchery, he disappears, put a blind shot in, and now we're back to the Sherman. And you can see there, I'm definitely having trouble penetrating that turret. And from this range, uh, I can't guarantee I'm even going to hit the target uh, accurately, especially if there's only a sliver of his turret available. So now he's coming up again. There's the hatchery. Let's see if we can finish him off. No, I bounced off. I'm trying to track him here. Uh, I do get a shot in, and no, there we go. The M4 Improved gets him. All right. So at least we're sharing our kills uh, equally along this flank. And uh, now we're going to advance up, and uh, the Sherman's nowhere to be seen. If he has the 105 again, I have to be a bit concerned. But it uh, doesn't look like he's there, so we'll see if maybe he's backed off a little bit. I mean, this game's over now. We're in cleanup mode. It's uh, 12 to 6. There he is down there. Try to get a shot in. Aim, aim, aim. No. Okay. The IKB-103 puts a big heat round into him, uh, into his side there from the looks of it, and, uh, and takes him out with one shot. So now the kb 2s advancing. We just have to find the artillery. Uh, this is my favorite part of the game, of course, killing the arty at the end. 
And even though I don't get to kill them, even just spotting them and helping my friends kill them is great. Another birch gun, there we go. Uh, and the Lux comes up and kills him too. Alright, okay, M37. Can I get him? Come on, come on, come on. Go, go, go. One more, and bang. There we go. Got to cut the already kill in at the end. So, Ace Tanker again, Confederate. Uh, managed to damage a whole lot of tanks. 975 damage, 840 XP. Uh, 33 shots fired, 22 hit, only 19 penned. Uh, but you know what, I was pretty happy with that and got a decent amount of spotting damage as well. So that's the T-50. Super fun little tier 4 Russian light tank. Highly recommend it. Uh, again, plays a lot like the T-127. Plays completely different from the Lukes. Uh, but uh, you can definitely have some good battles. And as you saw in my videos there, you can definitely bounce some shots uh, from equal or lower tier tanks. So uh, thanks for watching, folks. Uh, I promise to get another video up before too long. Please consider clicking like and clicking subscribe. This is Sir Harry. Thank you so much for watching. Cheers.